Hi friends, today is October 24th and it is the first time I'm doing the intro video at the end of uh, the hike. Um, I will want um, Laurie to explain everything but just as an introduction, today uh, Laurie took me for a ice climbing training. In my last video of this uh, entire episode, um, you will hear Laurie's thoughts as they were. It's just the intro. Okay. Thank you. Bye. And now just pull the rope in. Okay. Maybe back up a bit so it's away from the water so you don't get it wet. Okay. So Laurie is doing the ice climbing training for me today. He is going up on this cascade. Pulling it in. You gotta keep pulling it in. That's it. Thanks, Kenneth. He's doing this cascade waterfall that is frozen. Of course, not completely frozen. So, look at him. So efficient. This is all ice. Actually, it's ice fall now. And I'm supposed to do this after he finishes. He's going to go over that band up there and then he'll disappear. He's gonna go further. Okay. So he's gone all the way to the anchor and once he's there Okay, I'm going to stop the recording So I am walking on the waterfall right now. First time. Right here, more. Yeah, a little further. Okay. Laurie has asked me to come here. And then I'm supposed to get. Okay. GoPro stopped recording. So this is Laurie doing another pitch on Cascade Waterfall. He's testing if the ice is solid for me. Oh, the water is right there by the way. You guys can see water flowing under the ice. And this is what Laurie is testing.
Okay, so I think he's arrived at some kind of flat platform. I don't know if he's going to go further. Oh, he's gone further. So, I'm going to stop recording. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. So Lori has just asked me to come up and uh, this is the, okay. Stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. So friends, we finished um, Cascade, Icefall, Cascade, no, Cascade, Waterfall, yeah. Ice Climb training session. Lord is driving. I'm going to ask him uh, two things. First is what was the objective of today's training? and second his assessment for today's training so Laurie, how are you feeling i feel fine okay and uh, again i have to keep my eyes on the road oh so. yeah Laurie is such a good driver uh, so Laurie, what was the objective of today's uh, training well there was a number of objectives one i'll list them in order not a priority but sure. as i think of them so one was to uh, you want the light on yeah is that better? Yeah. Okay. One was to start to put into use some of the rope handling that we've been practicing on the cliff bands beneath the Amnuska when we've been out rappelling. Mm. I wanted you to get the experience of seeing how in cold conditions, how we're using that. How mm. we're using the rope to protect ourselves. Mm. How do we get down using the rope? Today we had to rappel. You rappelled on your own today coming down the waterfall. Oh, okay. That was one thing, was for you to see in practical use how we use ropes, protection, ice screws, anchors mm. to safeguard ourselves when we're on uh, terrain that's risky. Mm. Secondly, I wanted you to get the experience of using your new crampons, the... Yes. Um, darts they're called darts made by pestle pestle that's right pestle darts and uh, they did really well they didn't ball up as much as mine did mm -hmm. I think yours only balled up once and there was just a little bit of stuff there yeah. because uh, we, you were standing in water and mud and it froze mine mm -hmm. I had to hit quite often to break away the stuff mm -hmm. this building underneath it and although I didn't want to start you off on mono points that's what you had, so we dealt with it today. We'll switch them around to front points okay. for the next time that we do anything on ice. Uh. But you did fine 
you got a chance to see how your crampons worked with your boots. Uh-huh. We played around with the adjustment to make sure they wouldn't come off. Uh-huh. Uh, both your crampon and my crampon came off. Uh-huh. Um, that's a good example of why at the beginning of an ice season where you're going to be using your crampons, uh-huh. you should go to a safe place where you can practice the basics. Yeah. Climbing up, climbing down, you, where you don't need a rope. Uh-huh. Where you're just working on the different techniques uh-huh. and there's a lot of stress on your crampons uh-huh. and on your boots. And if your crampons come off there, well, you save yourself a lot of trouble because you don't want them coming off when you're on something steep. Yes. Okay, so one was to get you, give you a chance to see how your crampons feel. Yeah. Then the other was to make you more conscious of how important it is when you put crampons on that you position your feet correctly. Mm. You can't blindly walk or stumble up a waterfall wearing crampons. You, you have to be aware of how the vertical points work mm. that go straight down and how the two front claws that stick out the front mm. work. Mm. Let me see, should I, we're doing a hundred and, I don't want to get hit by rocks, so I'm gonna go in front of this guy. Okay. Just let me get a little further ahead. Sure, take your time. I got, I got a rock chip in the window yes. not that long ago and I had it repaired. I don't want any more. And mm-hmm. now's the time of year when there's a lot of rock chips on That's the road. Right. Um, so, first ropes, um, second new crampons, third, make you aware of how important foot placement is. Mm-hmm. That if when you're on your front points, your heels are too high, you run the risk of rolling your toe right off the ice. Yeah. And so you got the experience of forcing yourself to be conscious mm-hmm. of how and what your feet are doing. That mm-hmm. was why you practice climbing without any hand tools at all. Mm-hmm. To see how you should be relying more on your feet than most people do. Mm-hmm. They're the strongest part of your body, not your feet, but your legs, your hips, your thighs. Uh, you can support more weight with your legs than you can by hanging off your arms. Mm. So that was another item on the list of what I wanted you to become aware of. And as you become a better ice climber, you're a better normal climber. Mm. You pay more attention to how you place your feet. When you've been ice climbing, it's, it carries over into mm. regular hiking and regular mountaineering. Yeah. Um, I wanted you to try ice climbing tools, ones that are designed specifically for hooking on steep ice. So you got a chance to try your ice axe and a chance to try a short waterfall climbing tool. Uh, Again, not to develop any mastery in that area yet, but to expose you to the different kinds of tools we use to attach ourselves to the mountain and to the ice. Um, Let me think. Oh, I wanted to take you to an area that was different. Yes. And so doing something like this where we rely heavily on hand tools and crampons, I I think that's good exposure for you. Because okay. they're gonna be you're gonna be using your crampons on Everest, you're gonna be using mechanical ascenders, yes. you're gonna be using ropes, mm-hmm. and you're gonna use your ice axe. So it's part of the skill sets you need to develop and work on. And as a general rule, that was it. I didn't want to put in so many things. That was what I was hoping we would hit on today. And we did, we touched on all those things. So here's the assessment now. Assessment. Exactly what I was going to. Thank you. So in terms of um, how you did, like anyone beginning and starting off, um, it takes a while before you make yourself sensitive to where is your heel. It pays to watch others climb and then really be conscious yourself of looking down at your feet and checking to see if your heels are high, if they're low, getting somebody to help you by by telling you. So as most people do when they begin, you had your heels a little too high numerous times. Mm. They got highest when it was the most important to keep them low. So when you were on a piece of ice where the hand tool wasn't gripping very well mm. and you'd get nervous, you'd bend your knees and your heel would come up very bad. Okay. You got you to work on that. 
and, and the only way to work on it is we practice. Get out and practice it. Mm. Because it doesn't take much for your crampons to slip out and then you start sliding. And once the speed picks up, it's hard to stop. Mm. We don't want that. We yeah. don't want to fall at all. We want to make sure we know how to prevent that. Yeah. In terms of, um, let's look at the rappelling. You mm. did fine. We had yeah. you set up, you rappelled on your own. Mm. I safeguarded you by being down below to ensure that if you went too fast, I could slow you down. But you did fine. I didn't have yeah. to intervene. Um, in terms of consistency when we're descending, it's probably important to, as you get more comfortable in that environment, remember all the little things that slow you down. Taking a wrist loop off one hand and putting it on the other yes. takes time. Yeah. That's why I don't bother. I just yeah. leave it on my strong hand and I adapt mm. so that we can keep moving. Okay. So a lot of times, um, it's not that we're racing against time, but when we're descending, we want to be efficient. Gravity's on our side. Mm. You don't want to go too fast though, because you see what happens. I slipped, yeah. you slipped. Yes. Luckily, we slipped in places where we didn't get hurt. Mm. But that's where knowing how to use your ax, and that's where having a long tool and a short tool comes in. Um, when we're waterfall climbing, I just use two short tools. Okay. When I go mountaineering, I've got an ice ax. Okay. It's longer, along with a backup short lightweight tool mm. for when the ice gets steeper. Okay. And you use the longer ax when you're descending some of the stuff we were descending before we got our trekking poles. Okay. You know, very uneven terrain. You step down, your ankle twists. Mm. So hopefully you, you know, you're assessing your boots too. Are they standing up? Are they giving you enough ankle support mm. so you don't get you don't hurt your ankles when you step on a rock? Mm. Oh, I guess this guy doesn't want to be exactly. He's in a rush. Well, as long as he stays ahead of me, I guess we are talking about a Sammy who is trying to really pass us. Okay, he's in a he hurry. That's good. I'll let him get ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's see about the other things. Um, rope work. You remembered your knots for tying in, which was good. The, mm -hmm. the uh, figure eight. Yeah, figure eight. I didn't have to, you did it correctly. That was great. Um, you know, you did you did really good. When I asked you to climb without hand tools, it kind of surprised you. I think you were wondering mm -hmm. why. But I think you figured out pretty quick that it's to make you aware of what's going on with your feet. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need a day where we're on really good ice mm -hmm. and we'll we'll start refining how you move on your crampons. You may not think that this has a lot of application on a big mountain like Everest where you're going to be on fixed line, but mm -hmm. believe me, there's no guarantee you're always going to be on the fixed line. That's right. And when I was ascending on my summit day and descending, mm -hmm. I mean, we were climbing hard green ice that I kick my crampons and they just bounce off. Wow. It's that hard. You need to know how to move correctly. Mm. And that's only going to take, you're only going to learn that by practicing. So today was not a perfect learning day for some of the skills because there was snow on top of unconsolidated ice. Mm. We, we'd break through the ice, our hand tools would hit the rock below, mm. we'd scrape our crampon points on the rock below. It'll be different when we go to a different place where the ice is built up more mm -hmm. and um, we'll be able to work more on pure ice technique. Okay. Nice. And as a general, and we're safely off the mountain. We're driving back to Calgary. Mm -hmm. We're both warm, uninjured. Yes. That's the main thing. End of the day, we're safe. Yes, I agree. So thank you so much, uh, Lori, oh, for you're welcome. such a fantastic input. Uh, it always helps me when and uh, you give your candid assessment. And uh, today was uh, a new day for me. I learned so many things first time. So I'm quite happy. Thank you one more time. You're welcome. And tomorrow is your birthday. So That's one right. more time, happy birthday and Thank enjoy you. your day tomorrow. I will.